Hey, welcome to Cherish TV. We are so glad you tuned in. We are five friends and we may not always agree, but what we can agree on is that we want to make the world a better place. We have different stories and different journeys, but we love bringing you a different view. I want to welcome my co-host this morning, beautiful Emma, welcome, Hi, Anastasia Hi. Darling, sparkly Ashley, and beautiful Victoria, welcome to Cherish TV. Well, we have an exciting episode today, yes. ladies. You ready to get into it? Yes. 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 But before we start with the big stuff, I want to just have some frivolity, maybe frivolity first. Here. I want to ask yes. you a question because I recently went to a wedding where the bride wore pink. Oh. And it was actually really beautiful. She had all the guests wear white, all the guests came in white, but she wore pink. And so she had this fabulous entrance wow. and looked really stunning. That's but cool. I wanted to ask you the question, how do you feel about brides not wearing traditional white? Ooh. What opinions do we I, have? I have been to a few weddings as well, and I love it. I think it's a way the bride can stand out and kind of like mix it up a little bit. So I'm into it. Would I have not worn white? I don't know. I don't know if I'm out there enough. I don't know. What would you do, Stace? I mean, I feel like each girl needs to rock out with what she really feels. So I think the, you know, the whites, the creams, you know, the colors, I think it's your day, it's your wedding right. to each your his own. Your day, baby. Yeah. Right. It's so true. I personally love white, but I guess to each their own. I, but I guess back in the day, like when I was growing up, brides were not allowed to wear, like in the church, were not allowed to wear white if they weren't virgins. Wow. Which wow. I think is terrible. It's like so. I think I, that's I, like a world thing. Wow, yeah. So was, I had a girlfriend who was not allowed to wear white to her wedding. So it was like, wow, judgy much? You know, <laughs> like. And so yeah, it's like instead of like your beautiful entry down the aisle, it was like the walk of shame. It's terrible. Yes. So I, you know what? Wear whatever. I'm surprised I think it's that like happened. A, I think I it's like a trend thing because when I got married, listen, I had a tiara and I had a poofy. Yeah, you did. I looked yeah, like I was going to King Sierra. I'm like, here I am <laughs> with a giant ball gown, but that's not the deal now. So. Every fad comes yeah. in those, in my opinion. Yeah. So white, pink, black, uh, Kim Sierra, here you are. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's good. I mean, we just saw the wedding of uh, Meghan, Markle, and Prince right. Harry, and she Beautiful. looked stunning. Oh, but her Beautiful. dress was very controversial. Did you know that? Why? People went into it, they thought it was too simple. Oh, like, I love her beautifully and simple. Opinion. I thought she was no, the last lady. Lady. When you're that, I mean, she's so stunningly beautiful. Stunning. And again, the culture, I think, in Britain right. and Australia right. and the Commonwealth is more natural. So she's probably got <laughs> Prince Harry yeah. going, I love you just the way you are. Harry. Mm. Which yeah, is what every woman wants to hear. That's right. So honestly, she kind of, for every woman out there, she really <laughs> held her own. Side she note, her dress, $340,000 though. No way. Was it made way. of gold? Yeah. I don't, I, uh, really? Is yeah, that no, that actual? is legit. I so $340,000 to look fat, simple and classy. Me, yes. I don't understand wow. how things cost so much. Like what, literally, what is it? Is there, epic. It, oh, I, that was an epic train. Yeah. yeah, it was stunning. But material's material. I don't understand. Well, depending on the material. I'm just the sewer behind it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Not yeah. all materials are created equal. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. okay. Oh. Let's get into our first topic. Um, we've, we've been discussing uh, a whole lot of issues around um, being a wife and a mother and marriage and that kind of thing. And it got me thinking about the Proverbs 31 woman in the Bible. Now, she has been upheld as the right. gold yeah. standard of what a woman should look like. Yeah. And really a model that has been used in a church and I dare say around the world in other secular mm -hmm. circles as you know this this woman who really has all the attributes of a good what a good wife right. looks like mm -hmm. so I wanted to open up this uh, topic for some conversation what does a good wife look like I, I love this topic and can I just say when I get to heaven I'm gonna meet that Proverbs 31 girl and be like hey what up why make it hard for the rest Seriously, of us we all kind of love her and hate her to She's be like honest the Beyonce yeah. of heaven I swear when the we get Beyonce. up there you're gonna see <laughs> no but um I love this topic because honestly this is a question like how to be a good wife I had as a young bride so I grew up in a single parent home so my mum wasn't a wife she wasn't married so when I came into marriage it was a question I really had like okay what does it actually look like to be good at this thing because I'd never seen it modeled for right. me so all I could kind of do was see things from afar so this scripture was a little intimidating, to be honest, because uh, if the scripture goes to a whole big list of things that right. we should or shouldn't do, and it was really a journey for me to not be insecure in, in being a good wife. So um, I love that we're talking about it, and I love that we have so many representations of good wives and good wives to be. Hello. Um, right. So um, in terms of, for me, what a good wife is, I think it's really evolved. I've been married 11 years, and I realize what's been good has changed in different seasons. Mm. You know, yes. what worked in one season wouldn't be in other seasons. This is one thing I realized, is that um, equality, I think, 
but being a good wife for me meant being equal. And I had to get over that pretty quickly and realise that it's actually a partnership, not an equality thing. Mm -hmm. And then I realise in different seasons it's even yeah going to change in terms of what I could provide for the right. relationship. Yeah. I know I tried to model my wifery, if that's mm -hmm. a word, after... Yeah, well, I saw <laughs> my wifery. Yeah, my my mom, you know, my mom, I mean... God bless her. She's a little OCD, though. So everything. Yeah. So there was nine children in my house growing up, and every morning she would make us a hot breakfast. She'd be stirring what a woman. hot chocolate, oh, and every, I'm not girls. even joking. And how hot many lunch. brothers and sisters do you have? There was nine of us oh, in the wow. house, and so and yeah. then a, a hot meal. She did all the washing. I never had to do my own washing. So wow. I. She, that's just what she did. So nice. I took that and like that's the expectation. Mm -hmm. So I tried to be like my mother for like three weeks, and then I'm like, what? <laughs> like, yes. oh no. Yes. And, and I remember John just going, when I finally said, I go, oh, I can't do this. And I had this meltdown after three weeks. And he just goes, yeah, I thought it was a little over the top. Like, I didn't expect you to do all that. So that was but just. I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> not complaining. So that, it. you know, I tried that. Yeah, the expe but expectations, I think, yeah, is huge. huge because one. honestly, um, when we were going through premarital, we actually went through this checklist of who's going to do what, literally from oh, that's great. cleaning the toilets to vacuuming, the cooking. And it was like, you had to write the name. Mm -hmm. Who's going to do it, Becky or John? And because I was going to try to be my mom, like, I put my name for everything. So it was Becky, 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 Becky. I didn't put John for anything. Wow. And then, but what's really funny oh. is John also put Becky, 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 Becky. <laughs> and, and I, again, it lasted for three weeks, though, because I thought right. that was the acceptable Longer thing. Longer than I would have lasted. But then, <laughs> but you realize, like, my mom did that. She wasn't working. She was just at home. And then yes. I, was a wor I was always a working person. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. It, it and I kind of had the opposite, not growing up in a household, you know, where a marriage was modeled to me. I think I was a little bit more like independent woman style. So going into my marriage, I didn't actually get that I was there to be a helpmate to my husband. So I was probably mm. the other extreme. He'd come from a mother who was a stay-at-home mom. Like, she was awesome. Um, shout out to my mother-in-law. She used to fold down his bed and leave a treat for him on his pillow. Oh, my God. Oh, and then he got married to me. Sorry about that. So <laughs> you were the oh, treat. Oh, I was the treat. treat. You were the treat. <laughs> There's a visual for you all. Um, but um, so I also I had to pick up my game in a lot of a lot of areas, like learning what it was to provide a meal when I needed to, or keep the house clean, even keeping you know myself looking. Well, like... you're right, Emma. Sometimes we have to actually be what hasn't been modelled for right. us. Right. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of situations around the world yeah. where we're seeing that people haven't had maybe you know, and that's not to say you didn't have a correct model, but there are a lot of women who haven't or right. haven't even right. had a mother in their life to kind of show them what a wife looks like. Right. So they've yeah. had to navigate it for themselves. Right. Yeah. That's why it's so important that we talk about it because right. we are, I think, blissfully unaware of how many people don't have right. a good role model mm -hmm. in this area. But expectations, yeah. I'm sorry, are everything, like, because you have your expectations but then, like, the reality and the gap in between is where you get bitter, frustrated, resentful right. at mm -hmm. each other. And so you mm -hmm. have to have the conversation with your spouse, like, what, what are our roles? And I don't think there's any roles that are, like, an absolute. It's yes. different for every family. Like, we know Absolutely. Lisa and Michael Henley, who has been on the show before, he loves cooking. He cooks every he single all night. All the so, why does that? Yes. It doesn't have to be the expectation of the wife. In that family, what works is he does the cooking. Mm -hmm. And so, my. I, my love the, uh, I love the idea of that because I love the fact that you could bring your unique qualities, talents, abilities, yes. Yes. and like you're saying, yeah. actually have the conversation to bring about the best balance in the, in the relationship. Yeah. Yes. Because sometimes, you know, I know I have a friend and she's awesome at finances, but her husband felt like, I have to do the finances. That's what a man does. Right. But yeah. instead, when they mm. actually communicated, it was That's like, great. no, let's Beautiful. make decisions together. Mm. Right. But you're actually really good at accounting, that's your you know, strength. And numbers, that's your strength. And yes. so that became a beautiful strength in their relationship. So. I think that's yeah. so, so key because a lot of people get caught up on that, especially in the financial thing. And I know yeah. in the church, it oh, very man. much is the man leads, yeah. the man leads, mm -hmm. the man leads. But I think you've, you've just broken it down so perfectly because it's like I contribute my great strengths, but we make these big decisions together. together. And all right. those big yes. decisions have yeah. to be made yeah. together. Well, can we yeah. speak to this for a minute? I think there's this mentality right now that marriage is 50-50, like the expectation is 50-50. But can can we just talk, that is actually not that realistic most of the time. And sometimes I think if that's our expectation that we share half the load of everything, that isn't realistic in some seasons. Sometimes I'm home with my kids, my husband's right. at work full time, so it won't be 50-50. That's why that word partnership right. I think is really important. Yeah. And can just speak to that too. If we want everything to be equal, that means everything is equal, that we, we share an equal load of bringing in the finances, oh, an equal you know partnership in the bedroom, an equal partnership in the family room. Like everything has to be oh, equal. Wow. That's why it never mm -hmm. works. That's why I think we really have to approach it with this partnership agreement. Yeah. 
Which we're partnership, but, but even session. giving that, like, uh, even the 50-50 thing, I, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree on in the sense of I feel like both spouse should give 100-100. Right. Yeah. You know, like, we're, we're each yeah. giving yeah. our all to the relationship. Yeah. So I don't even know if we could break it down. You give 50, right. I give 50. I think we're each giving our absolute yes. best right. to each other, to the family, to the relationship. And I think it's different each season, too, because, yes. you know, I am right now staying at home full time with Dallas and you could say, oh, well, Cute she doesn't baby work. Girl. Uh, thank you. I love her. Um, <laughs> I'm obsessed. But I, I think that Kenny and I actually had the conversation in the beginning where he would be frustrated and he's like, well, I'm, I'm the one that's working. I'm like, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm actually working as well. What do you think I'm doing here all day? I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. we, and it was an awesome opportunity for us to sit down because we've never been parents before. And so we sat down and cleared it. And it's so awesome yes. having that where I am giving 100%. I mm -hmm. might not be clocking in, but oh my word, at 6.30 a.m., oh, yeah, ring, ring, are. ring, Dallas is awake. That's and right. And no <laughs> calling in sick. over here. 6.30 is a sleep in. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No so calling it's just in a matter of, like she yeah. said, partnership 100% and then knowing the times and seasons of it, in my opinion. Like, seasons is everything. Yeah. Because I really didn't um, need a whole lot of help from John, like, in the beginning. But then when babies came, I became real angry when he wasn't helping. <laughs> like, the whole yeah, the love yeah. languages, acts of service, I didn't really care. And I'm like, you you better be stepping up with your acts of service now. Right. Because I need some I service. I want this one now. I need, some I need you know, so it changes. Like, I yes. could have cared less about that before children, but now I'm like, if he doesn't help me, I feel like he hates me. I'm like, yes. you see, I'm struggling, I need help. And so in seasons, yeah. Yeah. everything is gonna need to shift with 100%. conversations and expectations. It's gonna look differently as you go through the seasons of life, So right. just being a good wife, just really being good at communicating your needs um, and listening to other people's needs. Yeah. Like, I think, that's I think communication is massive. I, I would also say, you know, being a good wife is also being aware of what our husbands need at yes. any given time. And I think oftentimes one of the greatest things missing in any relationship is encouragement. Yes. Yes. So we're all Good. looking for yep. it. We're all looking to be affirmed and told we're beautiful and yeah. told we're valuable and whatever else. And we're, you know, we're doing a great job at what we're doing. Um, but are we pass paying that forward? Are right. we passing it on? Often I think in marriage relationships, yeah, yeah. yeah we can look at things with very much are my needs being met? Yeah. You know, I need to be communicating what I need, but are we yeah. listening to the communication of our spouse? Yeah, so good. And you wouldn't know? we, like, in any relationship, when it's not working, like, ring in the help. Yes. Yeah. Like, get the counsel, get Brilliant. the wisdom yeah. when Brilliant. it's not working out and there's right. frustrations. You know, in any relationship, like, so important to, you know, that's the time to reach out to friends that are doing it well. Right. We haven't had the example, so we ring to the friends that have and yes. take counsel and wisdom and then write your yeah. own story. It's your choice. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. There's a beautiful, in, in the Proverbs 31, it says, the heart of her husband safely trusts her. And wow. I think when I we that. enter the marriage relationship, like, can your husband trust you with every area, like, with his sex life? with oh, his family, so with his home, with the finances. Can he trust you? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and the Bible says that, you know, she does him good and not evil all the days of her life. Yeah. Wow. Um, you know, so I think we have to ask, are we doing our husband good? And can he trust me with all of those areas? Because, and you have said this before, Leanne, when you get married, you hand the keys of your husband, or, or your husband hands you the keys to his sex life. Like, right. you're the only one that can activate that. And so... The only one that should. That should, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Many can, only one that should. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. You know, so, right. yeah, can yeah. he trust you with looking after those areas, you know, yes. of his life, so... And I think that's important questions for us to yeah. ask, because we live in a really me-centric world. Yep. Right. That is all about what I need and what I want and what I'm not getting. And, you know, really the fundamentals of the Christian life is, you know, I'm looking not just at myself, yes. but I'm looking onto others. Right. And it's so true for the marriage relationship. Yeah. Yeah. If you go into marriage thinking I'm going to have someone fix all my problems and yeah. make all my dreams come true, mm -hmm. you got to... You flip that dish around right, and say, that. you know what, I'm here to help make your dreams come true yeah. and I'm here to make your life better. Awesome. And if you've got two people doing that, yes. oh my gosh, it's a collision yeah. of unselfish yeah. love. Yeah. Beautiful. And the most, beautiful the things come out of it. statement I heard in our premarital counseling was, always try to outserve the other person and then don't keep score. So if you have and that's both hard. people that's trying hard. to continually, yeah. it, it is. Yeah. If you can both, you're going to be yeah. meeting each other's needs, serving right. each other, and then yeah. don't keep track of who's doing more. Oh. Yes. Like, what a beautiful yes. relationship. Can we talk about that for a second? Because how hard is it to not keep score in a marriage? I constantly hard. find myself <laughs> having to uh, just forget mm -hmm. things right. that I constantly want to remember. Sometimes yeah. from 25 years ago. I've been married 25 years, almost 26. Oh, and wow. so, um, yes, that actually yeah. does. Yeah. Go on. 
That's like a million years in today's world. Yes. But, you know, it's amazing how much our mind wants to wander back. And I think even being a good wife would, be, would mean, am I forgetting the things that I need to forget? Mm. Am I remembering the things that I need to remember? Right. Which is so important, like, that we read the Proverbs 31 woman, because the world right now, we've got 50% of marriages ending in divorce. Obviously, this concept of a good wife is getting harder and harder for some people yeah. to grasp. I'm so thankful, as somebody who didn't have a model oh, for me, right. for that scripture God put in the Bible. So if you haven't maybe read that yet, that's a really good, gives it a whole bunch of characteristics, like you talked right. about, what actually, the character of a good wife, like mm -hmm. how to actually outsource that in yeah. your life. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And even just the topic, I think, sometimes can seem a bit taboo, because we live in a world that has been, uh, you know, very much gripped by uh, third wave feminism. So even talking about, you know, a good wife, oh, what do you mean? What right. do you mean? Why are you even going there? Like, I think it's, it's something that we need to talk about again, and that's why right. we are Cherish bringing you a different view. Yeah. We're going to talk yes. about the things yes. that maybe some people are afraid to go there, but we're not because nope. we care about people and we care yeah, about absolutely. marriages. We care about yeah, you. That's true. Awesome. All right, we're going to transition into our next point of conversation. And it actually... Uh, leans perfectly from what we were just discussing. We want to talk about the juggle of the modern day woman and one of the most asked mm. questions and actually one of the questions we were asked most yeah. to really address on the show is does a balanced life actually exist oh. or is it a unicorn? <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a balanced life? Stacey, take it away. <laughs> I think when we look at balance, um, first of all, if you look at history, I look at history and all the greats that have done something amazing in history, or look to the Bible and you look at the heroes of the faith, uh, their life isn't a white picket fence, a house with the, you know, the family, the dog, the, like I don't read those stories right. in history of the heroes of history or the heroes of the faith in the Bible. Right. I see people that have charged ahead, like yes. life mm -hmm. happening to them, crazy, right. and a grappling of what this thing is called balance. So I think that balance doesn't necessarily exist. I think priorities exist. Mm. And I think right. that when we look at right. life, we can't look at it as a tick list where we are, you know, God first and then family second and then third this. And then, because if you play it that way, you're always losing. Yes. Right. You, you right. can't ever get to the next, something's losing out. Yeah. So right. when I think of balance, I think of a world in which what are my priorities? What are the principles that I'm living by? Mm. And then also, if we can look at it like a circle, like tick, 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 and having, or it was explained to me one time, it's kind of like you're driving a car, mm. and sometimes you need to lean and veer to the left and veer to the right mm. in the seasons of your life. and. Um, and look at the priorities daily, weekly, monthly, mm -hmm. yearly, what's our purposes? Yeah. So I right. think when we, we need to reestablish the definition of balance. I think we need to look at what is a quality and a purposeful right. life yes. on yeah. earth, and then yeah. from that place, learn how to live that out. So yeah. right. yeah. I, I think as well, um, I agree with you in the sense that it's never going to be 50-50 or it's never going to be this perfect lineup, but I actually do think there is a balanced life, in my opinion. I feel like it's the same way with food. So like for Becky's diet, her balanced diet is going to maybe look a little bit different. Maybe she can have more milk or dairy or whatever, maybe for me it's different. And so in my mind, when I think about balance, I actually do think there is. It's just, it can't be perfect on a pie chart, so it's not gonna be evenly divided. And so if you look at your life that way, then I think it gives you like an ease, where I'm not like, I have to have everything. Everyone gets 50% right. of Ashley right now. Some people will get 80% of Ashley. Some people in seasons will get just a quick 10%. And I think it's knowing I the do seasons. think it's when it becomes rigid. Yeah. Sometimes right. when ba balance can become an idol. Yeah. And it's almost like I can't give to that because this is number two yeah. on, my, on my balanced life list. Right. Mm -hmm. right. and, it, and so we can create a system totally. that then rules us instead right. of it living to, you know, enhance our life. Right. Yeah, and I think we need to be careful too of, you know, there's a lot of kind of opinions and a lot of people, you know, I know even for, you know, my life, I was getting people coming up to me like, you are charging, you know, too strong, like a head, like you've got all these things, you need to rest, you need to, and I'm like, uh, I'm gonna lie on my bed and do, like, <laughs> I have magazine. the time. I wanna make right. it purposeful. And so I think that each of us have to stand before God and find out 
what he's asking of us yeah. right. and what mm. the purpose is in this season of our I life oh, yeah. and ask him I what it's that. about. And then sure, we can use the, the wisdom of everyone, but I knew for me in different seasons, no, I actually feel like I'm doing exactly yep, right. what I'm meant to be doing on planet Earth right now. And while that looks different to maybe the way you're doing it, right. let's not compete. Great. Right. Yeah. Let's, right. let's live yeah. our lives yeah. and let's each of us, you right. know, just live what we feel in that moment. And of course, you know, if that does get out of balance, right. Right. then grateful for relationships and friendships and people go, hey, yeah. sweetheart, let's reconsider. And I have had those conversations yeah. as well. Right. Sweetheart, you're, you're going real fast. And then we were able to talk about it and I can reevaluate and stand before God again. So it's not a one-off. Right. Yeah. I think it's quite, a, you know, something That's we right. have to think about a well, lot. Well, it's different strikes for different folks, I think. Right. And, you know, everybody responds to different seasons differently and you just have to go, okay, a little yeah. more here, a little less there. And, and different seasons call for different areas of focus. Oh, man. Yes. Right. So when you've got yeah. little children, for oh. example, sometimes it's all you've got in your tank to give to. <laughs> and the poor old husband who used to be getting a buffet of your love and attention oh. is now literally getting the to-go bag through yes. the window. Yeah. Here's like a little to-go package <laughs> so good. of Ashley. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. But it's delicious though. Yes, yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. thank you. <laughs> but we're, we're, let's, let's talk about this. Are there times in your life where you feel like your lives were, let's say, out of balance, uh -huh. for lack yeah. of a better phrase. Mm -hmm. What did you do to, co to correct it? I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. speak to Go that. Ahead. So John and I, um, because I don't actually think you can be fully balanced, meaning equal parts of you right. given to every right. area of your life. Right. So what we do, because we understand there's ebbs and flows of every season, and yes. there's busy seasons and there's low seasons, and so what we do is if it's been a really busy se season at work, we have what we call a checkup, like how are we doing? Okay, so we acknowledge the fact that we've given a lot of our time ourselves to our work. Do you so fight that before that? <laughs> Because I want to know that we, sounds so perfect and I no, love it, but I'm like, uh, Jürgen and I would have had five yeah, fights no, we, leading up to that conversation of we need balance. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, there's some irritability, fight? I think, and there's okay. some tense moments, but I think what we do is we just go like, we've spent a lot of time at work, like we've got to, the kids need more of our attention. So we ask the question, what area of our life has been neglected recently and what needs to be nurtured now? Mm -hmm. And so if it's been a busy season at work, like, okay, so the kids haven't got much of our attention. Right. So we're like, okay, so next week or this Friday, we have to make the kids a priority. So we're constantly going where, where we've been neglecting, where has been getting our time, and let's make that adjustment for the next week. So it's like this, we're kind of going in and out of a balance, like, uh, you know. And this is so like good, that. and I think what we're seeing here is the Proverbs 31 woman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. Hashtag no, real life. <laughs> Proverbs 31 woman says her lamp does not go out at night and mine flipping does. Don't wake me up. I'm freaking tired. Okay. Well, I think for me, like knowing there's out, an out of balance, uh, like I have an area that's yeah. out of balance or sometimes we don't even know it's out of balance until yeah, their agreed. cracks appear yes. or right. there's some tension. Right. And so for Jürgen and I, we will just go happily merry al merrily along and then there'll be the introduction of irritation that mm -hmm. leads yeah. to arguments. And then that will be a sign where we need to sit down and bring yeah. a little, a greater level yeah. of balance to the force. Which might be a good time to bring in a famous Nana saying. My, my Nana's full of sayings to me. And <laughs> in those seasons of life where I felt out of balance, she always said to me, Emma, remember life isn't something that happens to you. It happens through you. And what that was Ooh, really telling me is Nana. I have the power. Go Nana. Nana yeah. <laughs> but that always made me as a young person understand that, okay, life, I'm not a victim to my life. I actually control what my You're life empowered. looks like. You're empowered. I'm empowered to yeah. change things as That's needed. That's a good word. Like around balance, I feel a lot of people feel like, oh, my life is so out yeah. of balance. Like they're victims in it. Just remember, we have choice what yes. our life Do looks like. Do something yeah. about yeah. it. Do something about it. Yeah. Like we're have the conversation. Yeah. Read yeah. the book. Do yes. what you need to yeah. do. Get the counsel in order to bring shift to those yeah. areas that may be a little bit out of balance. Yeah. And I think there's an, there, just like we're talking about, there's an, an ebb and a flow to that. Mm. I remember one time, it was so funny, I remember um, I actually got asked to teach a course on um, the balanced life, right? Oh. So like teaching the course and I'm going over all of the notes and I'm like reading everything and it had literally had this test to like see like in what life. areas of your life, you know, are going well or not well. And, and it like made you address like one to 10 and 10 being awesome and one like, <clears throat> you know, not. Yeah. And it's like be truthful. And I literally was like reading it and I was like, 
ones all the way down. Like I'm the worst. Like I literally was like, can you teach everything? Out of, I was like literally reading about my life is out of control. <laughs> okay. Like everything Proverbs is negative. 31. Negative. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> negative. And so I was like, <laughs> I'm not gonna cheer for being negative. Okay. So so then I remember though. I'm like, okay. Oh my gosh. What am I gonna do? And I remember I had to walk in to teach the class. So I remember you know wanting to be transparent and not teach something that I wasn't truly living. Right. And I was just like, I'm gonna preach this to myself, right. um, you know, to actually learn this yeah. balance, you know, wheel. And that's really when I phoned a friend. Yeah. And that's when I went, because yeah, I think we friend. have to stop and actually take a moment to self-assess. Right. Yes. And go, where am I actually at? Can I say the one so. thing we cannot actually forsake, and I think as women we're really guilty of this, the one thing that we have to have if we're going to have balance is a day of rest. Yeah. And that's oh, biblical. And we can always busy ourselves yeah. with something. Mm -hmm. But are, And I've been convicted of this recently, like just having moved and wanting to get the house together. Like, have I actually taken a day yeah. where I'm not tasking myself like a taskmaster? And, right. You know, do, can we yeah. just rest? We have, or if even we're going to be balanced, we've got to have rest. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you don't, it's if you not can't a do a day, day for yeah. some women out there, they'll yes. be like, a day, whatever. Yeah. Um, but it, right. can you grab a couple of hours? We have to. Yeah, just we've take whatever piece. And it may not be a, an hour on you know, one specific day every week. Right, Even right. if it's like two hours here, three hours there, mm -hmm. whatever it to may be refreshed. throughout your yes. seven, Recharge. just to recalibrate. And, and I yes. found as well is that in this season, again, with this mother life and a pre-toddler, I'm like, okay, it was one thing to keep a baby alive. Now <laughs> I'm actually having to like raise her to be a good human. Yes. And I feel like I'm spending more energy, even though I'm sleeping. I mean, she's a great sleeper. It's the emotional injury. So energy. Energy, not yes. energy. Yeah. It is yeah. energy. Yeah. Yeah. Taking the rest is that Kenny and I actually have an agreement. So uh. on Sundays and Thursdays, those are the days I sleep in. Well, Thursdays I come to prayer, but Sundays I get to sleep in. We leave the twelve, but mm. I'll sleep in. He gets up with her. I can rest. I can go to the gym. I can go by Great. myself, get nice. coffee, and it's my you know four hours of rest before we go to church, and I don't have to think about the house being dirty. And it's agreement, and it doesn't keep. And awesome. keeps us from fighting about that. So, so this whole idea of like the flow in, flow out, we just got to make sure it's going both ways. Yeah, so we're getting filled beautiful. up before it flows That's out. That's exactly I love that it. Idea. Like, just and what sure. it looks like in the lifestyle of each person. Yeah. Right. Because you know, some people so are, you know, you know, they they're going at it alone. Maybe they're, you know, with, you know, without right. a spouse, and you know, so their life looks totally different. But everybody can find, like you said, a moment, yeah. hours, a day yes. Yes. to just stop, reassess, be at peace. We've got to. And then face everything. And, the, and we're there going are different through. seasons, and I think a lot of us will go through stressful seasons, whether it be some kind of trauma or mm -hmm. relationship issues, and there is a lot of stress. And, yeah. and I have been in those seasons in my life where literally my saving grace every day was jumping in my car, going to Starbucks, grabbing a coffee, listening to music on the way. Mm -hmm. I, it was a 45-minute personal <laughs> transaction, yeah. but it just yeah. centred yeah. me. So, so you may so not good. be able to get a day, ladies. You may not even be able to get an hour, but can you grab... <laughs> 30 yes. minutes just to decompress, oh, yeah. put on some great music and find your peace again. I think mm, it would yeah. be so beneficial for you to grab a hold of that. Um, and also learning to say no sometimes. Yes. It's a big one. one. We're all yes. people pleasers, or some yes. of us are. Yeah. So learning how to say no to the things that are a distraction so we can say yes to the great things. Great. Amen, Amen. and glory. Love hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've come to an end of another Cherish TV episode, but we are excited to bring another episode next week. Next week's episode, we're going to be talking on some really mm. interesting issues. Mm. Oh. Um, number one is abortion ever okay? Mm. Uh, so that's a, a real sensitive topic so uh, what I'd like you to do if you have a friend who is in the valley of indecision or has some confusion around right. this topic or right. just needs some enlightenment or wisdom please have them tune in next week to Cherish TV we will be discussing that topic and also a little more lighthearted is it okay to ever date a friend's ex oh. we're going to be exploring <laughs> that one so it's sure to be a whole lot of fun we love you and we love bringing you a different view see you next week bye bye who can find a virtuous woman? For her worth is far above rubies. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household. She girds herself with strength and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. 
She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household. For all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. Whoa!